What's up, you guys? Welcome to this week's episode of the Just Saying Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Martindale. And this week, I'm very excited to have back a comedian touring all over the country. He is the host of his own show, Behind the Jeans, uh, a follow-up to the Your Mom's House uh, podcast. And the newest addition to the Comedy Store Studios podcast network. He's the host of the Josh Potter Show. It is Josh Potter. Hi. So Welcome. good to be back. Thank Welcome you. Thank you. To the canon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How are you? Great. How are you? I'm good. I'm very excited that you're here. Me too. I'm very excited that you're back. Yes. We had so much fun the last time we are here, but I uh, just want to give a quick shout out and a big thank you to everybody who came to my shows in Fort Worth. That was fantastic. People were driving in from out of the city, uh, and believe it or not, um, it was cooler in Texas that than it was, it was here. here. Yes. That's wild. And I want to give a quick shout out to my uh, new friends, Jacob Marshall and Ioma, who are my feature, my opener. Fantastic. Check oh, them nice. out on Instagram. They were great. Love them. Um, but yeah, shows were great. And got back here and I said no, because it is, I mean, absurd. Yeah, I, I was gone for much of the wave, got back on Sunday and it was 110 degrees in my apartment. And I was, it was like, there was like a fog in my apartment because I hadn't so had the humid. air on for 10 days. Ooh. So I just walked in and it was like a bog in there. And I was like, like the sloth scene from seven. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was, yes. I thought I was going to hear like wildlife. Like, go, 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 go. <laughs> <laughs> like, you have a machete yeah, just to yeah, get to yeah, your yeah. room. It was brutal, oh. but I feel like the heat, we, I missed the most of it being gone uh, on the East coast. And now it'll feel like fall here starting tomorrow. So, I know, Can't isn't wait. that just very bizarre how it's just like, and... A little blip, and we hadn't had heat all had, of the summer. It hasn't been like this. Like, I asked Alexa yesterday, I was like, you know, we don't talk that much. But when yeah. we do, I was like, hey, Alexa, what's the weather? And she was like, 106, like, without a beat. She was just like, she it's knew. fucking She knew, she couldn't hot. wait for you to tell Yeah, she couldn't wait. She was her. like, please, please, I'm so sick of like... You know, infiltrating your algorithm. Just yeah. ask me how hot it is. Outside. She was like, Justin's going to definitely ask for the weather today. So I'm going to have <laughs> that one on deck. It was absurd. And I forgot. This is what drives me crazy. Well, there's many things driving me crazy. Right now, during the heat, this is what's driving me crazy. Everyone in town has decided this week, the hottest week of the year, we're all going to trim the trees. Oh, Every street, we're trimming the trees. There's construction. There's just, especially in my neighborhood, I'm just like, I can't, I can't go anywhere. Yeah, just tree trimming, just beeps, 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 ah, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> all that shit. Outside. Imagine those workers being like, "This is the week we got to trim the trees." I feel so bad for yeah. them, and God bless them. You know, I'm like, trim those trees, <laughs> <laughs> and um, also. Um, I forgot how stupid everyone is when it gets above a certain level of temperature. And brains are boiling. Just It's like everyone's idiots. on bath salts. It's, yeah. Yeah. Literally. That's everyone's why in like, Florida, people are like, rah, 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 oh, yeah. Faces Full zombies. And, just yeah. rah, 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 like just <laughs> yeah, screaming yeah. and just no one knows how to drive. Someone had their left signal on and then just went over two lanes to the right. I'm like, what are we doing? I'm from cold and snow and we don't have that. Yeah, because people are like, Ooh, no, yeah, you're everyone from can't Albany. move Buffalo, but every, it's you know, is that not Albany? No, no, no. Albany is <laughs> on the other side of the state. Oh, but it's close. No, <laughs> it's eight hours away. I'm gonna gaslight you until you agree. <laughs> in, in terms of the United States, yeah, it's close. I guess, yeah. <laughs> well, um, in I'm, terms of Earth, yeah, it's yeah pretty close on, on a global yeah, scale. Yeah, it's yeah. very close. Yeah, yeah, See, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Um, but uh, I'm very, very excited because we have so much to talk about. But um, are you watching any of the end of summer, early fall shows? What are the shows? Now, the shows that I'm like, heart, you're talking hard knocks here? <laughs> what are you talking no, about? like, what, what, are, what are you watching right now? Like, or if, if I am, I was watching hard knocks. It's a big uh, end of summer show for me. It's about the training camp of the NFL. Like, they pick a team and they and watch I'm it. out. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a reality show. I think you'd enjoy okay. it. Okay. And, uh, mm -hmm. they, you know, it's all, the, it's very dramatic. And they've been doing a lot of reality shows about football, which I very much enjoy, mm -hmm. uh, these productions. And that happens every year. So, I mean, it's pretty in real time. It's it's interesting. But that's it. I don't watch um, 
any of the Islands of Love oh, or yeah, no. anything like that, really. But what what other shows might I be checking out? What what else is out there? What should I be watching? I don't know. Well, we have the new season of Selling Sunset, which oh, just so yeah. came out. Where are these? I don't even know where these shows are. It's exist. on Netflix. Okay. Yes. And it's it's I just watched the first episode of the new season and it's it's pretty spectacular. May I ask what cuz this is not the only show that I am aware of that has now mixed in uh like blondes mm -hmm. with tits and wine and mm -hmm. real estate. Mm -hmm. Like what is this sort of match that they've made? That's how did it. they find a, how did they stumble upon this that you throw well, a real the estate devil in? puts out an ad <laughs> and it's usually by the name of Oppenheimer. <laughs> um and uh, I don't, I really, I, I wish I knew, but like my favorite part of every season is when they finish the first episode and then they show like this season and you just get the montage and just the outfits just get crazier and crazier. And this is just a woman showing properties. Allegedly. <laughs> okay. I don't know if any of them actually really have a real estate license, but now they're like, there's relationships in other franchises. So okay. there's like, you know, someone's apparently like rumored to be hooking up with someone from Selling Sunset OC. Wait, so they're fucking each other, but they're never selling a house? Oh, yes. So what's the point of this? <laughs> like this? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's for us to just sit at home and go, Oh, um, just I mean, once I want to see a property be sold here. Oh, <laughs> Did yeah. Did it start like, out that like, yeah, way? Yeah, no, like someone's like, can you guys sell my house, please? Yeah, and yeah, they're like, yeah. no. Did it start out that way where yeah. they're like selling property and then they go, wait a minute, she's fucking the other real estate person? Yeah. Is Let's she, talk about that. Is she doing ketamine in, yeah. the, in, the, <laughs> in the primary? <laughs> is there any other place to do it? I, I mean, have an open house today, so I have to drink a bottle of wine, of yes, course. Yeah. Yes, that's how real estate should be. A nice, I think it is. I mean, Yeah, Sauvignon Blanc. Seen at an escrow, like, go for it. I would love to get to a place in my life where I would go into one of those things without anxiety, worrying if I can afford it. Do you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Where mm -hmm. you, you go in and you go, I can buy anything I oh, want. Oh, yeah. So you go in there and you have some wine, you talk to a, some lady with tits and she tells you about the how many bathrooms there are in the house mm -hmm. or whatever. I would be wonderful. Same with, like, car commercials. I would love to, like, watch a car commercial and be like, yeah, I think I'm going to go buy that now. I know. It's very... um very humbling. Yes. Because you're like, oh, this is a, I mean, some of the, some of the estates are, I mean, estates really, that's what they are. Yeah. Uh, just gorgeous properties and like, but there's some of them that I'm like, this is too big. Like, what do you do? Like, there's, there's a petting zoo in here. Like, <laughs> you have a grotto. You've got like, this is, this is the first, this is the first house they show on the new season. And it's amazing. So do you see the pool? That's the infinity pool. I feel like this house is famous for something. It's right above sunset. I, I want to see actually... But it used to be like someone's house. I think you're right. I feel like I've like seen producer, that on like in like the a TV news producer, or something. Like back in the yeah. day. Like in the 60s. I yeah, yeah, say yeah. Like yeah. Merv Griffin or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but so that's the infinity pool. And then see the little white oval? Yeah. That's... That is a fire pit that you can go down into, which is like a couch. Oh, my Lord. It's insane. What's and, funny is I would I would fantasize about living in a place like that, but I've only lived in small right. places. So I would like just the corner of that house I would like live in. The rest would be empty. And empty, that would be rooms I Airbnb. would never even go in. Yes, it's it's crazy. And that uh, house is $38 million. Oh my Lord. I, I mean, it's, it's a good deal. That's actually pretty cheap compared to what I thought. <laughs> Look up Russell Wilson's house. He just sold, he was sold selling his Denver home. Uh, for twenty, he bought it for twenty five million, and he sold it for twenty one million. Everyone was shitting on him. They're like, "Oh, taking an L on the real estate there." Russ. Yeah, taking an L in Denver. Yeah, it's uh, Denver. I mean, this place is beautiful, but there it is. That's twenty five million mansion. Yeah, right. Whew. That's too big. It's wild. Him and Sierra lived there God. for like six months. I mean, they barely were in Denver. Oh, and they and they. That's what's crazy. They're like they build these big homes, and then they're there for like three months, and they're like, "We're over it." I'm like, "Yeah, what?" Well, oh, I mean, I would he die got in there. Uh, he got me? cut from the from the Denver Broncos, so he had to move to Pittsburgh. Uh, but I don't think Sierra went with him. I thought they would just keep that. I don't house. think Sierra would ever be in Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I don't think she's not no, ready she's to one two step to Pittsburgh. PB, okay, PB, PBG Paints Arena or whatever. Yeah, no, but I mean that's gorgeous. Yeah, that's great, right? But, but that's what I like. I'm like. I'll visit, <laughs> but I know if if I have a friend who has like this kind of a large compound, I will 
and I'm invited to stay. Say they're like, oh, stay as long as you want. I'm like, I'll leave tomorrow. Like, I feel like that would overstay my welcome. Sure, sure. You know what I mean? They're like, no, no, no. But in a place like that, I feel like you could live. And no one would know you're there. Yeah. It's like the ultimate squatter's dream. Yeah, this is like parasite <laughs> to the max. Yes. I mean, they wouldn't yes. even know. I'm in the West Wing the oh. whole time. It's like I'm one of the inanimate objects in... Uh, Beauty and the Beast. Yes, the the other side. Yeah. What would you be in Beauty and the Beast? <laughs> Ooh, that's a good question. It is a good question. Let's mm. see. Um, <sighs> in Beauty and the Beast, they were all old timey. There was no like appliances. You know what I'm saying? Well, right. Like but I'd love to be like a Keurig. Let's machine. do a modern appliance. Yeah. Like, what yeah, would you? What, oh, I'd love to be a PlayStation. Okay. You know what I mean? That would uh -huh. be a fun one. I'm always like in the mix. You know mm. what I mean? One of the favorite appliances. Yeah. I'm not a broom where I'm attached to some chore. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's off. I'm not a I'm not Swiffer. a broom guy. I'm not a Swiffer. Or no, something you're definitely not anything a attached to like a negative connotation has yeah. got to be like because then you pick it up with resentment. Yeah, and you can like leave it there, play it all day, let it collect dust, whatever yes. you want to do. You're using me for Netflix. You're yeah. using me for everything. I'm like, what's up there, Chuck? You know, or whatever mm -hmm, the beast's mm -hmm. name is. Uh, we never found out the beast's name, did we? Uh, it's like Adam or something. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's is like, it really? Yeah, it's like Prince Adam or something. <laughs> I feel like, what, what would I, I'm trying to think what a, what modern appliance I would be. Enchanted AF. What about a juicer? <laughs> or something, I don't know. A, a magic bullet. No. You know what would have been the gross answer if I was like, I'd be a dildo. A bidet. Yeah, I, Sorry. Don't make me a bidet. Don't be a bidet. That's I've, like I'll that's one bidet. step above I've worked toilet. Too hard. Yeah, that's basically being like I'm the toilet. Yeah, I'm that's the. I'm, yeah, I'm the. Thanks, Lee. <laughs> Jesus, I know what I'm going to be cursed as if yeah. he ever turns down a gypsy into his castle. <laughs> um, I I would say I would be the wine fridge. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> making sure all the wines were appropriately chilled in my thirty eight million dollar estate. <laughs> that's that's nice. been cursed. By a gypsy woman looking for refuge. <laughs> um, but uh, so Selling Sunsets out. We also have The Perfect Couple, which mm. just came out with Nicole Kidman, Leif Schreiber, uh, Bono's daughters in it. Is this a scripted it. show? Yes. I'm more into scripted things, so it's I'll check that out. It's scripted, and I'm actually going to talk about it more next week. But okay, I that's really fine. want you to do your homework because there is a little bit of a scandal about it because it's... I think it's a show that they were like, this is going to Amazon Prime. Yeah, it does look like a thing where they were like, this will be Tubi, but yeah. then they overshot. And it is deliciously tacky. Ooh. And it's crazy because Nicole Kidman's in it and Leif Schreiber. I mean, it's a great cast. Um, uh, one of the women, I can't remember her name right now, uh, uh, from White Lotus, she's in it. Um, and it's it's camp. It's camp. It's good. Uh, Dakota Fanning's in it. Um, wow. Yeah, it's insane. But uh, um, Leif Shriver, by the way, the voice of Hard Knocks. He does the narration. Oh. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's, he, 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 is he really? He's the narrator? Yeah, he's like one of the voices of NFL films now. He's like Caleb Williams, rookie quarterback. Like he taught, he does all the voiceover stuff. Leif Shriver can get it. Yeah. Like, uh, like America's Dilf. Honestly. He was so obsessed with Aaron Rodgers that it was the one time he appeared on camera for Hard Knocks in all of its years and he came to like meet Aaron Rodgers because Aaron Rodgers said he wouldn't do Hard Knocks unless he got to meet Lee Schreiber. Wow. It's in his contract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. Well, yeah, it's definitely... I mean, Nicole Kidman gives you wigs. There is a... I'm not going to give anything away. If you have seen this, you get it. If you haven't, please watch it. There is a flash mob intro. No. Every episode. Wait, different ones? No, nope, same one. Oh. <laughs> it's spectacular. Does Nicole Kim in talk Australian or regular? Yes. I mean, I love when she does an English accent, which is like Batman and no, Batman and Forever was the only time she ever. I think I think she's going for British, but it's Australian. Well, and she they're is just Australian. Kind of, well, I know, but I think it's like Oh, I see. But it's is she's it, putting a little twist on it. Yeah, I think she's done so many accents that she's just mixed up, and she doesn't I think really she's have a Nicole voice Kidman. She's like, I'm going to talk how I want to talk. I never knew she was Australian because the first thing I saw her in was Batman Forever, and she was talking like she's like, "Well, Bruce Wayne." Every like she couldn't talk American accent unless it was sexy. Yeah, you know what I mean. That, That's like, when she played um, 
What was her name in? Batman I don't remember. Forever? Doctor uh, Chase Meridian. I can't Chase believe I just, Meridian. I, can't believe I pulled that one out of my ass. Yes, you really did. Yeah. Bravo <laughs> on the pop culture. Damn, that's gonna take you to trivia one night. <laughs> I can't believe I just remembered that. I just remember her in the in the Kiss from a Rose video where she's like, Oh yeah, that, and she would just like freeze. I think my uh, first erection was from that video. She would Mister Freeze to the camera. <laughs> um, but anyway, so those are definitely some of the uh, hot shows. Have you seen Beetlejuice yet? Did not see Beetlejuice. I saw Twisters. Awesome. <gasps> Loved it. <laughs> but I was obsessed with the first one when I was like 10 years old. Oh, so was I. I, I but I was five when it came out. I was out. 10, yeah. I was, I was actually not born yet. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I was two when I saw it. Um, I was obsessed with Twister, the first one. This one, I wanted them all to be scrapped at the beginning. Oh my God. All of them. I, they were like, When oh, the little girl from Mad Men died, I was so Good for so her. Sad. She got out because I think she read the rest <laughs> of that script and was like, I'm out I of this. I thought it was great. I thought it was Ugh. Twister again. I'm just no. going, I like this. This is Suck funny. Suck them all up. Just it's get them out of here. It's supposed to be shitty and I like that Ugh. about it. Ugh. Suck them all Suck up. Suck them all up. I was I was not having it. It was just so lame, and I'm it, tired of the world trying to force Glenn Campbell on us. Who's Glenn Campbell? Exactly. Oh, Glenn Campbell, the musician. I love. Glenn no, Campbell. isn't it Glenn? You mean no, Glenn, Glenn Powell. Powell? I'm like Glenn Campbell. Glenn Campbell. Rhinestone Glenn Cowboy. Cam Glenn Powell. My, yes. I have a Glenn Campbell uh, gold record in my. No, it's it, it's Glenn Powell. The other yeah, yeah, Glenn. Yeah. I think I well. Here, here's where I'm at a loss. I would have thought you love that guy because I see that guy as going, God, he's so fucking handsome. It no, makes he's me not. Angry. It makes me angry. He's handsome, but it's not like ah. It makes me angry. I go, God, that guy's cool and handsome, and he probably gets all the chicks, and I'm so jealous. I think he is a Scientology recruit. Oh, in real life, I have no idea about yeah. him. But he plays these guys, and I'm I think like, Hollywood's like, welcome to the machine. You see Top Gun? I saw I thought, saw him in Top Gun. I go, this guy gets laid. What, Maverick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw him in Maverick. But I mean, look, I mean, yeah, he's like the new, they're, 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 Formulating him into the new Clint Eastwood kind of yeah he's a, he's the new uh, Tom Cruise yeah Tom Cruise Clint Eastwood that vibe all American I and yeah it's it's a, it's enchanting me so I mean like <laughs> I'm like having like jealousy I get and mad I'm like God he's so cool God I get like mad <laughs> um, but Beetlejuice I thought was yeah I'm interested to see what you, you know think. what's interesting I never really watched the first I watched the cartoon. The cartoon's fun. I love the cartoon. And now available on uh, Tubi, I believe. Yes, but all never seasons. watched the movie. The movie's great. The first one's spectacular. So shit. good. The second one, I want to know your opinions. I personally thought it was a bunch of storylines that they just went yeah. and put it all in one. They could have taken one less storyline and run with the whole thing. It's fun. It's campy. At the end, I was kind of like, that's it? You know, well, that's why I kind of like Twisters because it was a <laughs> sequel of something from my childhood mm. where I was like, Oh, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And they made a new expanded story on it that was modern and it had like updated technology and things like that. I thought that was all very like well done. Like Independence Day 2, like I was obsessed with Independence Day as a kid. Yeah, and Independence Day 2 came out. I'm like, Well, they just ruined everything. Oh, yeah, no, it's it's we're at we're full sequels. We're getting a Goonies sequel now no. after like 40 years. Is Jerry O'Connell gonna be in it? I think they all are. I think they're all going to do it. But I'm also like, it's, you know... Stop are... ravaging my childhood. I mean, Seriously. Just... And here's the thing. I swear to God, if they bring out like Sloth's grandchild <laughs> or what, I'm out. I'm like, I don't need... Like... He's completely normal. It's like, yeah. look at what's happened. It's like, yeah, my dad was Sloth and this was the cave that he was trapped in. <laughs> he loved baby Ruth. Like, oh man. So... I think Steven Spielberg's on board with that, so we'll see. That doesn't mean anything. But no, he's made some clunkers. What has he done lately? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know I brought I brought you on here for a very special reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because as you know, it's Fashion Week in New York City. Yes, the is this the Met Gala? <laughs> So close, <laughs> so close. See, do they do a fashion week in every city, like big city? Do they want in Paris? Yeah, they and have stuff? like, and yeah. they just spread them out throughout the. So there's yeah. like someone's job to go it's like to pride. all of them. Yeah. Okay. So it's like <laughs> it's like Paris Fashion Week, New York Fashion Week. It's New York Fashion Week. Okay. So this is your hard knocks. Yeah, yeah. This is my hard knocks. Okay. Okay. Sure. Um, not it's, but it's narrated by Anna Wintour, not okay. Lee Schreiber. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did um, Joan Rivers used to do it? Where she'd be like, oh. <laughs> Look at this slob. 
<laughs> Did she used to do that? That was just the red carpet in general. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, she would do. She she wouldn't go. She would not go to Fashion Week and be like, "Oh, okay." Put some clothes on you, fucking. Ugh! What a whore! Get it, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she would say this. He was great. <laughs> Eat some carbs, you troll. Ugh! Look at this bag of bones. <laughs> What is that? A, a bag from from Ralph's that we're wearing? This bitch fucked my ex husband. Yeah, like that. That was that was good old Joan. But <laughs> no, it is kind of amazing because everything is coming full circle. We're about to do a Fashion Week Inception here mm. uh, on the podcast because it involves Naomi Campbell, and Naomi Campbell, one of the most iconic supermodels of all time. Right. Um. But she has definitely had the reputation for being a mean, evil woman who loves to throw a phone. Um, Naomi Campbell, the black Campbell, right? I keep, I, sometimes I get Nev Campbell. Wow. I get them mixed up. Nev and, Nev and Naomi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like Glenn Powell and Glenn Campbell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Naomi Campbell. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are they related? Who knows? <laughs> um, she's also been um, allegedly involved with the purchasing and selling of blood diamonds. Ooh. Just, well, everyone's in that, right, Leo? Just, yeah, drama. Just high art drama. Yeah. Um, so she is also not a victim of lies and rumors, but this past week, her behavior has set off a chain of events that had everyone acting wild at two separate Fashion Week events. So Ooh, the first one... Done? is Anna Wintour, the belle of the ball for Fashion Week and the Met Gala, uh, ticked off Anna Wintour, um, slams Naomi Campbell for allegedly being tardy. And Can we Naomi, say tardy? People are still late. Yeah, but that's what... Isn't that like short for retarded? Like what? tardy? <laughs> because isn't that means... Retarded means like slow. So tardy would mean late, like you're running slower. No, tardy... Yeah, being late. It's that like is the same. Not, it's still derivative of that, right? No, uh, there is no root word origin. <laughs> Pretty much for it, tardy. Yeah. It's like <laughs> no. I think it is. No, tardis is for slow. Yeah, it's the same thing. But re means again. So you're, or, so you're constantly slow. <laughs> Did we just figure it out? Yeah, I think we canceled the word tardy. It's late, folks. Come can on. We can, can we hey, can we cancel? Uh, what article is this? Guess what? It's late. Not it's late. Tardy, She's please. late. She's not. Yeah. New York Post. Pejorative word. Yeah. Well, Kim Zolciak cannot sing Tardy for the Party anymore. <laughs> mm -mm. So Anna Wintour and Naomi Campbell kicked off a feud when the Vogue editor shaded the British supermodel for allegedly being late to Fashion Rose <laughs> Fashion Show and Style Awards in Harlem on Tuesday night. Wintour took the stage to present the Fashion Icon Award to Naomi Campbell, but she was clearly ticked off that Campbell hadn't shown up to the event yet. So... And uh, Anna Wintour, she makes clothes? No, she's just in charge of, like... She's the editor-in-chief of Vogue magazine. Oh, so she's, so like she's just, just, like... Um, style icon. The devil wears Prada. She's, yes, like, the top... based off of her. Of oh, wow. Allegedly. Is it, is it really? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So Meryl Streep kind of played... They're going to make a sequel of that, too. Yeah, that's going to be, I hope, not bad. Mm. She says, I'm a very punctual person, and I have the honor of presenting tonight to someone who is often late, as the crowd laughed. LOL, LOL. Oh, if oh, this is like a, a diss to this woman, it's like, yeah, I'm late. I'm cool. Yeah, I mean, why not? Like, yeah. you can be late to your own award. Yeah. Um, so Wintour left after her speech. So... Um, a source familiar with the situation exclusively told The Post that Campbell was not actually late to the event. She was slated to speak at 7.27 p.m. on the dot and arrived at the event at 7.26 p.m. <laughs> while Winter's speech began... At 7.15 p.m. Ooh. See, I have no sympathy for Anna Wintour. This is like the MC bringing you up and being like, this guy missed my set earlier. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Do you get to the show right when it's opened the doors? I don't think so. I get there when like, you know, maybe I, whenever I want. I got well, they made me run the light because no one was here yet. <laughs> um, so the insider said Campbell and her team showed up to the venue just as Wintour was leaving. Wintour, according to the source, wanted to leave early so she could attend the U.S. Open. Put a pin in the U.S. Open. 
Wintour was photographed at the tennis tournament Tuesday with her daughter, B. Schaefer. So she went straight from the gala, straight to the U.S. Open. Now, are you a big tennis fan? No, I don't like solo sports that much. I'm a team sport guy, but, you know, I respect the event of the U.S. Open. Mm -hmm. But I'm always curious, like, there's so many, like, it, it's, it is like a place to be. There's, like, fashion chicks. Like, um, Josh Allen's ex-girlfriend, Brittany, became a meme. Mm -hmm. The one with the glasses where they're like, have you seen that meme? I used it up for a, to promote my show moving here. Uh, but, yeah, it's like, ah, God damn it. I don't know what, like, everyone's using it to be like, is he naming random football players again? You know what I mean? Oh, like, uh-huh. It's like that, she became a meme, but it's like high fashion women. I'm like, since when do they give a shit about tennis? All these people give a shit about tennis? I, you know what? I don't get it. it I mean, is, I understand. Uh, that one on the right there. Have you seen oh, this meme? Oh, yeah. So that's Josh Allen's ex-girlfriend on the left. This girl on the right is married to a tennis, or dating a tennis player. She's I would have said high-end real estate. Probably, maybe she, that's what she does, but she's dating a, and I don't know what they both, they're both just models or whatever. I don't know, but what they do to make their money. Huh. <laughs> Good for her. I just never, I, I like my boyfriend loves tennis. His parents love tennis. Interesting. I just. You're like, whatever, it's on. I don't get it. I, I don't understand. get it either. I just don't get it. As I mean, a, a, a just, fan of sports, I can watch it and be like, oh, that's cool. But I'm not like getting into tennis. Yeah, yeah. I'm not like, it just makes me worry about their knees. Oh, I see. Like, I'm always just like, oh, someone's going to blow a knee out or something. It's just, uh, I. but again, like what you're saying, like, do I think, you know, it's it's like a who's who was there this week. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, why are they, is it like the Super Bowl to the fact that like you're, if you're seen there, you are like upper crust or something like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. But I, here, but here was Anna Wintour. She skipped uh, the rest of the event after Naomi Campbell went on to go to this tennis event. However, right. is she just such a tennis head? She's like, I gotta get there well, to see like Djokovic. It's like, you know, play. it's like uh, international. It's like, yeah. you know, who's who is there? But Anna Wintour's departure was disappointing because there were three young designers who were at the event and were hoping that Anna Wintour would see their showcase designs at this fashion award ceremony. Right, it seems like that's more important for Anna Wintour to be at than the tennis event. But also, she shades Naomi Campbell, then bolts out of there and these like, Three young up and coming designers are like, really? Like, yeah. So you could get to a tennis match with your kids? Yeah. What's better, blowing things off early or, or showing up late? I know. And not even like, it's not like she showed up late and they had to like stall for her speech or something. Yeah. No. And I'm also like, it's a model speech. Like, how innovative and groundbreaking will it be? You know what I mean? Yeah. I can't imagine any of it being very. Exciting. Riveting. Yeah. <laughs> but then, hold on, it gets better because during these fashion shows, they have different celebrities that um, will be in the show, you know, in, in um, designer shows like uh, Tim Walls's, uh, Tim Walls's daughter. Uh, I'm sorry, no. Uh, Kamala Harris's stepdaughter um, was in one of the shows. Um, so anyways, they have celebrities like Kathy Hilton, Paris Hilton were at a fashion show and Tiffany Haddish was sitting next to them and Kathy Hilton dared Tiffany Haddish to get up in the middle of the show and walk around. Ooh, you don't dare Tiffany she Haddish was, to do I something. I never dare Tiffany She'll Haddish do to do anything. And Tiffany was like, really? You know, and she, <laughs> yeah, 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 she yeah. did the She Ready walk all around <laughs> New York Fashion Week. And everyone was like, ah, ha, 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 ha. So, of course, she got into a little bit of hot water because everyone's like, don't, just because someone rich and powerful tells you to do something, don't do it. Oh, that makes me sad. Why? Because they're, they're just like, dance for me. Do your th funny shticks. Do your for thing. Me. Do yeah. a skit. Make a slap. Do something funny. Yeah. Do. Hey, we dare you. We dare yeah. you. Just. Oh, she's but, such a card. <laughs> and uh, but hey, got her in the headlines. Yeah. Hey. Um. But Rihanna or Rihanna. Ooh. Uh, I'm still trying to get used to saying her name correctly. It's hard. Wait. What does she change? Rihanna. It to? Rihanna. I think I feel like I've been saying it right all along. You've been saying Rihanna. Yeah. It's but Rihanna. I was saying Ciara for so long. Sierra. It's Sierra. Yep. Which sounds trashier to me. Sierra? Sierra sounds beautiful. Sierra sounds like a stripper in a Phoenix. place in Florida that I'd yeah. go to. <laughs> the Sierra. <laughs> Get your dollar bills out. Here comes Sierra. Oh, uh, $4 fishbowl margaritas at the Sierra. Ooh, now you're talking <laughs> my language. Uh, Rihanna goes viral for seemingly snubbing her ex pal, Naomi Campbell, at a New York Fashion Week show. Okay. Well, so, they're ex-pals, Yes, they were ex-pals. So, Rihanna and uh, 
Uh, Naomi Campbell were allegedly friends for years, and fans speculate the relationship ended over Rihanna's relationship with billionaire Hassan Jamil. Uh, Who's that? I don't know, but I'm living for all of it. <laughs> like, Why is their relationship so... Is he like a pedophile or something? Like, no, what is he, what? like a lucrative sex trafficker? Why does he... Why, because he's a billionaire? That's Are we what just I judging assume, yeah. billionaires well, as being way, creeps? Why would you hate a billionaire if he was... <laughs> yeah, I, I assume he's done something bad, right? That's why they're... <laughs> well... This just in, he purchased a house for $38 million in the Hollywood Hills. No, I'm just kidding. It's like <laughs> it comes full the circle. The Selling Sunset. He's on sun Selling Sunset. Oh, my God. So, uh, I just love just a friendship ending because of a relationship with a billionaire. Could you even? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The guy must have done something heinous. Yeah. Otherwise, why would you have any sort of like guff with that? I know, I know. I, well, it has to be something horrifying. So, right. But this comes after Rihanna made headlines when she was unveiled as the new face of J'adore fragrance by Dior, having replaced Charlize Theron, who had a campaign with them for like 20-something years. Mm. So Rihanna has raised eyebrows after snubbing her former friend at a New York Fashion Week show. The video of the entry into the event went viral. It showed the singer walking into the Alaya runway looking stunning in a crystal mesh gown. I almost read that as crystal, crystal meth, meth gown. Crystal meth gown, that would have been yeah. something. That's crystal, fashion. <laughs> a crystal meth gown. Just, <laughs> Why I'm breaking we got dishes there? over here. Yeah. It's hobo chic. Hobo chic meth realness. We have a crystal realness. meth gown. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. have a uh, bottle uh, in can. Shut up and drive. Skirt. <laughs> um, and then greeting her former British Vogue editor-in-chief, Edward Ennefel. After that, Rihanna just kept walking, ignoring Naomi Campbell and La Roach, who were both also seated in the front row. The video also showed Naomi watching Rihanna as she walked into the hall and even looked up at her. However, the model did not react when she walked past. In another video, Rihanna can be seen stopping to chat with supermodel Linda Evangelista after ignoring Naomi Campbell. Oh, I live for this. This is so funny because if we were watching Hard Knocks, I'd be like, you see, and then John Varys got cut. <laughs> like, wait, it say it be, again? I would be like, John Varys just got cut, but he's buddies with. So, you know? Yeah, see, but look, okay, so here's the hug, <laughs> and then Naomi and Laura are in the front, and uh, just walks. Just gonna stand there and watch <laughs> me move. Yep. Uh, oh, so she just walks right by Yeah, her, see, and so Naomi like, looks oh. up at her. She's like, hi, uh, oh. Uh, Oh, and just walks right by. Damn. Now, have you ever done this? Now, I feel like... Um, yes. I want to say Rihanna is a Pisces. What's that mean? Can we Google that before all the star people come after me? Yeah, yeah, you're getting into star territory. I know. I don't step on the star Am toes. I guessing this right? So you're saying this has to be do with her uh, <gasps> reason for snubbings? You are correct. I am correct. Name that star chart. Um, Rihanna's two years younger. So than her. I feel like, as someone who is a, um, a, a Aries, technically, okay, but I was born on the last day of Pisces, which is March twentieth. So, so we're blend. very like emotional, very like, you know. Mm -hmm. We don't want to deal with confrontation and stuff. So this makes sense. So if like I had a feud with somebody yeah. and or an argument or something, I'm not going to go out of my way to be like, we need to talk. Like, right, I don't of care. Course. Like you clearly made, like you pulled a stunt. No, you make your choices. Yeah. But like, are you that kind of a person? Like if you had, I don't know. Do you have problems with people? Not really. But if there's somebody <laughs> I just don't enjoy, yeah. I don't even waste my time. Like I, people know I don't like them. Really? Based off the fact that I just never talk to... Like, if I see a person that I, I just don't... I'll be... I'm not not cordial. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, hey, how are you? But I am not, like, Going out of your way to... And if they try to talk to me, I go, I'm just kind of like, uh-huh, yeah. Like, I don't really uh, suffer fools very uh, mm -hmm. much. And I, if there's a person I don't like, I just don't do anything to be in their universe. Like, yeah. there's no reason for me to be. But if it's, like, a coworker or something like that, where you have to see them and interact with them... Yeah, I'm pleasant enough, but I'm not like going out of my way to volunteer information or uh, do anything to further a long conversation of any sort. Exactly, I agree, and I feel I feel like what Rihanna did in that video is exactly what I do. Like if I see somebody that I'm like, ah, oh, shit, I hundred percent just keep going. It's the yeah. beauty of being quasi blind. People just assume I don't see them. I put the horse blinders on and just like tunnel vision just go and I'll I'll see them I'll look I'll look at them in my peripheral and right. just be like I don't see you no they're even furniture. though they know I see them they're furniture to me
Because I just, it's like, I have no reason to want to come say hello. Yeah, what do I, what, what are we going to do this again? If I like am confronted with having to interact with you, yes, I'll be, I'll say, hello, how's it going? Good to see you. And then I'll continue along my way. But oh, I, if I don't have, if I can walk in a certain part of the room and not interact with you, pff, I turn where in, I'm going. I turn into a full tardy person. <laughs> I, I, like if I see somebody that I do not want to engage with, and then they're like, hey, and I, I, m like I prolapse, like I, I, like my innards just, bleh, like I just, no, I get the, I get, and people I get can nervous. visibly see it on my face when I don't want to talk to them. Oh, people see everything on my face and I don't say anything. <laughs> I look like I'm watching a video of like myself being molested as a kid because I'm just like cringing. I'm just like, yeah, no, it's so specific. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very like this face of pain on, yeah. comes over me where I'm just like, Oh God! Like oh. they can see it, and I'm just looking off in the distance. Like, please walk away. Yeah, please walk away. I had the uh, the club in Fort Worth this past weekend. They were they had a photographer there taking taking pictures of the the shows, and afterwards he was like, "Look at these pictures I got of you." And he had never met me before, obviously. And he was like, "These are some really good shots of your face when 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 you were talking to the crowd at points of the show." And I'm just like. <laughs> And they're like, wow, you're really expressive with your face. I'm like, yeah, that's kind of my thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when, and by the way, I, I'm not even talking like interactions with like fans or strangers or something. I'm way more like in like welcome to talk to them. It's I'm talking about people I have decided like are like toxic or I don't like them. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Like, yes. In my personal or I'm not going to professional. pretend. Yeah, I don't pretend yes. that I uh, uh, enjoy this person. Well, you ever. know who else doesn't? I never pretend to enjoy anybody. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Fair enough. You know who else does not pretend to uh, care is Anna Wintour. Back to her because oh, at the U.S. Open, <laughs> see how it's all coming about? Yeah, this yeah, is a yeah. Whole meanwhile, whirlwind. at the U.S. Open. <laughs> meanwhile, at the U.S. Open, after the Naomi Campbell drama, so cut to Anna Wintour at the tennis match with her kids. Who else was at the U.S. Open? Hoda and Jenna. From the Today Show, our twelve. Copy? Yes, Hoda Copy and no one Jenna talks Bush. about this. Hoda Copy is got to be loaded, right? Yeah, loaded, loaded. But everyone like treats her like a sub celebrity. I feel like Hoda, she's is, like upper echelon. She's she, she's like Regis. I love her. Yeah, she's great. She is on in my house. But I have. Don't you I feel like them. she's always second fiddle to like it was like Kathy Lee. Kathy Lee, Lee and then yeah. Kathy Lee was like like making her look like a clown all the time. Well, yeah. Like. Kathy Lee also drank Sauvignon Blanc out of a water cooler at like 9 a.m. But they got her to drink too. They yeah. were like, come on, Hoda. She's like, fine. I know. Fuck? She's an enabler and yeah. she's a good sport. Hoda means good sport. Now, Jenna, Jenna is Jenna Bush, the daughter of George W. Bush. Yes, she is. Oh my Lord. She's a talk show host. I remember when she was in the White House. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, that's yeah. crazy. I had no idea she was on the that's Good Morning America. No, today's today show. show. Yeah, that's yeah. wild. I had no idea. Jenna Bush. Yeah. Well, the two of them went to the U.S. Open, and allegedly Anna Winter told them to shut up. So they all went, and <laughs> this was on the show that came out uh, on Monday. So they said tennis is fun. We were loud and annoying. Uh, Hoda said on the episode of the Today Show with Hoda and Jenna. And she says that while they were there, um, that Anna Wintour, wait, actually, let me go back. Because she says, um, Bush uh, argued that some of the celebrities, such as former professional player Stan Smith, even encouraged them to be louder during the match. Though not everyone in the crowd was a fan of that direction. Now, I don't know, like, the etiquette of tennis. In tennis, you're really kind of supposed to be quiet. Right. Yeah. So it's like... But you can, when something cool happens, they cheer greatly. And it's actually very, like, gets you goosebumps. So yeah. I, maybe that's when they were saying, but... Well, these women are clearly lit. Well, I mean, I love a drunk Hoda. You know what I mean? Look at her. Just smile. Hoda lives just her best life. Radiant. And Jenna Bush, if Anna Winter... Anna Winter is not allowed to talk to Jenna Bush like that. Because Jenna Bush, her grandfather ran the CIA. This is generational wealth that even Anna Winter... <laughs> Can't even fathom. And it's like, I will drone strike your fucking house. <laughs> like, how dare you? Anna Winter wakes up and she opens her veranda window. <laughs> There's just drones outside of her patio. <laughs> She's like, ah. like her wig's not even on yet. My grandfather might have killed JFK uh, or something. Yeah. You know, my great grandfather. Like, the Bushes have airports named after them. This yeah. is like, uh, as American, like, you know, royalty, I guess, as you get. Like, it's the Bushes and the Kennedys are, mm -hmm. like, 
And Anna Winter's like, how dare you speak in my pre It's like, are you insane? My grandfather and father have airports named after them. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. I've got an airport named yeah, after yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, it's I mean she's that's like next her level. Father and grandfather were presidents of the United States. Mm -hmm. Her grandfather ran the CIA. I mean But Anna's the editor in chief of Vogue. <laughs> No, it's crazy that she could even breathe around. And her. the devil wears Prada. Maybe the Bushes sold themselves, sold their souls to the devil. I, I don't, don't know. know. Who who's got to be richer? Like I'm talking, like in the whole, like does Anna Winter's parents rich? I don't think Anna Winter's a nepro baby. I don't think she's no. Like, she's like self made and I think is like she is, super yeah. rich, probably in her own right. Yes, yes. But Jenna Bush is like Texas it, wealth, oil rich. Yes. From yeah. like oil, sh I mean, and CIA rich mm -hmm. and presidents and like fame since she was a child. Yeah, but uh, allegedly Anna told Hoda and Jenna to quiet down. You can't do that to Jenna Bush. Um, so I can't believe she's the host. That seems so beneath her. Who? Jenna Bush. To what? Just go be rich someplace. You have to host the Today Show. Like, there's some broadcaster you know out there she's that's a like, mom. There's some weather girl in Montana no, who's like, I think someday I can. She's gonna. I mean, she's not gonna be like. She's not gonna have like her own talk show yet. No, but it's crazy. She I wants think it's to be great. in the, the Today Show's great. It's like moms get up and get their kids ready for school. Of course, but that's that's like it's Americana. But Hoda Kotb is like not. She's from a broadcasting background. Yeah. That's like every little girl who grows up to be a weather woman or a anchor in your local news. That's what they strive to become is the on the Today Show or whatever. Meanwhile, Jenna Bush, who's just like, I want that job. Well, I'm going to throw this in your face. Mm -hmm. Why can't Jenna Bush be a talk show host? That's a good point, actually. I come, and I'm why around. is it okay that Paris Hilton is a DJ? I don't think that's okay. But DJ is something that you can just do. So is the Today Show is like today show. that's like giving that's like giving uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. the Tonight Show or <laughs> God don't manifest that please <laughs> I'm just saying it's, it's the same early. but I'm or like John John when he was alive it's like being like you're taking over for Jay Leno just because you're like you're handsome and like you can talk in a microphone that's the multiverse I want to go to <laughs> that's that's the timeline I would jump into in a heartbeat. Um, so I'm fascinated right now about Jenna Bush. I'm sorry. I can't. I'm glad. She I had think, some like scandal when she was a kid, right? Like she got drunk at a party or it's something. It's Texas. Like, we all did. No, no, I know. We I, all got drunk and lost in the woods. It's a rite of passage. I'm not blaming her for that, but I always wondered what happened to that sister of hers. Her sister, uh, Barbara, the twin. Babs. Yeah. She's like, she's like a mom. I think she's an author. She's doing great. That's the Bush awesome. girls are living. <laughs> yeah, um, I love it. I yeah. did I didn't thought about them in a million years. I yeah, can't they're, the I, I, I'm here for the Bush girls. Um, now we're going to go from shutting up um, Hoda and Jenna. Meanwhile, mm. at the U.S. Open, behind Hoda and Jenna are America's favorite nauseating sweethearts, Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. Oh, they're behind them, these people? They're behind them. That's While wild. they're being shushed by Anna Wintour, Taylor and Travis now, are slammed. Now, can I say this about Travis? Yes. He had a Thursday night game. So I get it. He has a couple days off, but he was in New York City, like marching around Brooklyn. Friday. Like this guy's got team meetings coming up. Like he this is what? week one of the NFL season. He, he again, he played Thursday night football in, uh, I believe it was Kansas City home mm -hmm. game. So that means the next day he went to Brooklyn because they were seen in Brooklyn outside of like a cafe. And he looks like a fucking tool, by the way, at this point. Like he went from golden Thank retriever you. to tool. And he's Full wearing tool. a fucking bucket hat with that oh, stupid get mustache. out of here. And like, so he, this is week one of the season. We week are in, one. this is like the season has begun. Yeah. And he is gallivanting around New York at the U.S. Open and everything like that. It, I mean, this, there's going to be locker room strife in the Kansas City locker room this year. You think so? And that could be the only, because they have like a pretty- Can that be my fantasy football? Sure. I'll make like, can I like bet on like, if there's going to be like locker room, like hostility? I, I mean, this I'll, is the thing that we feel, I'll that's go. what Hard Knocks like highlights and yeah. feeds into is all that kind of stuff. But um, to a degree- but Travis, like I said, he's got to like at least they have a game on Sunday. They have team meetings probably on Monday. So he's got to like be back in Kansas City. And I think they have an away game. But here's the thing. When you are all over, I mean, everywhere, he has a Ryan Murphy show that's coming out this season because he's an actor oh, now. Oh, he's going to be in a movie this summer. I mean, 
do you think the coach is like, Kelsey, knock it off? Well, he's such a talented player and he's been on top of his his position in like the league for years. So he hasn't really shown any cracks yet, but I feel like this is going to be, plus he's getting older. It's like, yeah, he knows the plays and maybe he doesn't have to like work out every day or be like locked in every day. But uh-huh. like there are people that are hungry for, um, you know, roster spots in the NFL who do just like the season's going on. That's all I'm focused on. It's 18 yeah. weeks. And that's what we have to like learn the plays, study the next uh, team, you know, like that kind of stuff. So, well, the fans have ripped into Taylor and Travis because they had trash antics at the open, the U.S. Open final, which left Britney. Yeah, it looked like they were at a fucking Dave Matthews Band concert. Thank the way you. They were acting. Yes, there was a lot of like grinding. They were they were <laughs> yeah. lip syncing. He was to, doing that thing where he's got his arms around her shoulders and he's just draped over her like a she, drunken yes. dad. And and they're lip syncing to I believe in a thing called love. Uh, the yeah. worst song yeah. ever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And they're just and he's like grinding on her like a weird cousin at also, a wedding. Also, faux pas on the DJ's part. Like the U.S. Open is supposed to be this like prissy thing. You got Anna Winter there yelling at Jenna Bush and everything like that. They can't play the darkness right. at the U.S. Open. Like, what is this, a fucking Browns game? Like, Yeah. What is this, a Trump rally? <laughs> Brittany Mahomes is getting shit because she was in a different box than Taylor uh, because Brittany commented well, on yeah. a Trump post or whatever. So now well, also, Harrison like, Butker is the kicker of the Chiefs. Mm-hmm. And you remember what he said? What where he, he was say? like, women shouldn't have jobs oh, right. and everything like right, that. Was, right. I figured that's the only reason anybody would know the kicker on the Chiefs, Harrison Bucker. The punter on the Chiefs, he was cut by the Bills because he was accused of a sexual assault at San Diego State University. It turned out that he was actually not guilty of that. He wasn't even at that party. But the Chiefs picked him up like before that came out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Fair enough. But I mean, look at these two. Look at him. I mean, he's, what is he, like a... <sighs> Uh, this is like I don't even know. They what I'm look like at. that couple that gets kicked out of the potluck dinner at church. It because- looks like they'd get a f- couple of drinks from him going like, "So we really like your vibe." To another girl at the bar. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, we I, really I, like your vibe. You want to come back with us? We have a hot tub. Oh, she loves. She loves when the cameras are on her. But well, I think she just assumes they're always there. Well, I mean they are. Yeah. Um, I. I mean. I don't hate when she goes... I think it's fun that she's brought even more... I mean, the the NFL did not need more press. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it is exciting and it's fun to see how many more people, like women even, are watching football and talking about it and everything. Like, like I think Lisa Traeger like, has legitimately become like an NFL fan. I remember she let me get high and just tell her like the storyline of like two teams. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she was like treating it like it was reality TV. Like she went to like a Bears game the other day. Oh my God. Yeah. We need to have an intervention. I think she knows everything about them too. Oh God. Not like this. It's so fun. Uh, well, one user wrote on X that Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey are pure cringe at the U.S. Open and this looks completely forced and unnatural. So also there was that alleged documentation that they posted. Yeah, what was that? It was saying that they have like a contract. Yeah, and like horseshit, right? I mean, like who would post that? I'll tell you who. Scooter Braun. Anna Wintour. <laughs> Wait, <what? laughs> No way. Yeah. After uh, they were there? Yeah. She's like, by the way, <laughs> here's the contract signed and sealed. I mean, why would that even... First of all, if that existed and it got out, there would you would hear about a million people getting fired. I mean, it would be like... Or executed. You'd yeah. be like... Uh, I mean, I'm surprised like more celebrities don't pull a Hillary Clinton and have their like PR person murdered. For okay. Uh, <laughs> another. <laughs> go, go watch the Josh Potter show. Yes. <laughs> my God. <laughs> One fan replied to that post on X and said, that's what I was saying. Do you see any other couples making out in the stands? Like you said, it's the US Open, not a football game. Have some decorum. Yeah. She definitely won't be invited to Wimbledon, included another one. <laughs> Uh, well, another one simply put, incredibly cringe. I mean, I don't know why. When did X become like Bridgerton? That's what I want to know. Uh, everyone's talking like Lady Whistledown on X, apparently. Oh, my Who's stars. Heads? This is preposterous. <laughs> the Duke will never allow them back in. I the Duke? Never. What? Um, so we go from Taylor and Travis being annoying at US at the US Open to Martha Stewart took some hilarious and unhinged secret pictures of celebrities at the U.S. Open. Martha Stewart, God bless this woman. 
is just drunk in the stands, <laughs> taking pictures of people. Why? Because it's a good thing. So... What day is this, by the way? I mean, this week, this past weekend. I know, but like Matthew McConaughey on Saturday was in Michigan at Ann Arbor watching Michigan versus Texas, and he was all over the broadcast for that. He's basically a Taylor Swift for Texas football. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was curious, like, what? So Matthew McConaughey is just like, I'm going to private jet from Ann Arbor. I'll go to the U.S. Open and just to be seen. He, yeah. He, I mean, that's crazy. What a life. Yeah. What a life. I mean, these are the people who get a $38 million home because they can. There. So, so here's Martha. Ooh, she, she looks great. Yeah, she does. She is at the Honey Deuce. Um, I guess she's in like uh, doing some sort of collab with them. She's just zooming in very close uh, and just taking pictures Who's of <laughs> celebrities and posting them on her Instagram. Is that a guy from uh, One Direction? Who is that guy? No, not no. I don't know who that is, actually. I have no idea. And then there's uh, Doofus. Doofus in a Gucci bucket hat. God, that's so. I, I mean, that's a bucket hat that I'd buy on like fucking 2001 uh, Sheen or something. What's the one? Uh, Timu. Hmm? I'd buy that bucket list, uh, bucket hat on like a Chinese. Oh, one. Timu? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, like it would be Poochie and yeah, not Gucci. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, there's Pat Mahomes again. He, he, How do these fuckers. Get away with... They have a game on Sunday. I mean, like, the fact that they are not locked in... I love it as a Bills fan. Yeah. Please, go do all your dumb events. <laughs> do all your fun stuff. Go, that's why Get Josh nice Allen... And tired. I think Josh Allen broke up with his girlfriend because she wanted to go to all this horse shit, and he was like, I got the season, baby. And yeah. Then, but now he's dating Haley Stanfield, the actress. So oh, I love her. That, but I think she's a little more, like, chill, and she just, like... I think she is. I yeah. think she's kind of a chill... Uh, Celeb, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think she went through a little bit of a wild phase. Right, she had that song called "I Love Myself," which is about like <laughs> masturbating, you yes. know. And, and then that kind of went out, and now she's like, now okay. she's dating my sweet baby boy Josh Allen, and she's also friends with Taylor. I but mean, the, but Josh, you don't see Josh Allen uh, canoodling. No, I no, I don't think athletes should canoodle. No, I don't like canoodling athletes. No, Josh Allen is like a, a regular guy. That's I want you I to like. be in the season, do your thing. I don't need you to like sing Dur karaoke would, like if, Burt Kreischer with these, your shirt yeah, off. Yeah. If these are my team, is this a guy who's on my team? I know they won three Super Bowls. Yeah, out of four years. I mean, I guess they've done their success, and you do let them do whatever they want. But I would be like nervous. Yeah. Because they're not locked in for the season, not at all. That was a fun, fun journey from the U.S. Open. What not that amazing? The U.S. Open is such a who's who. I had no idea. I guess I'll, I'll, if I get to go there someday, it means I truly made it. Yeah. Yeah. That's when you know you're good. Creme yeah. de la creme. They're 1%. like, and here's Shane Gillis in the boxed uh, shotgunning a Bud Light. You know what I mean? Like, pretty soon. But I not? hope... I'm sure we, he's got invited. I would love it to be there with like like all of us as friends, like, and then Martha Stewart's like taking pictures of us and we're like yeah. waving to each other from like across like the box. I'm doing like Martha Stewart. I'm like, <laughs> I would, I'm like, Martha. So we all know the popular now $100 million podcast. <laughs> look, look, 5,000 baby. Uh, or damn. Whatever. Call her daddy. Oh yeah. She's doing it. And she's interviewed some of the greats of our time. Uh, Jojo Siwa. <laughs> No, yeah, she is like Barbara Walters for um, <laughs> uh, women on Lexapro. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're on Lexapro, just say whatever the hell you want yes. and get a hundred million dollars from Spotify. <laughs> Lee, can I get some Lexapro? Can you get that on Amazon for me? That'd be yeah, great. We'll work on that. So Katy Perry went on Call Her Daddy, which I thought was just so... Ugh. Yeah, Katy Perry's trying too hard. Her music video, everyone thought it was like, what are you doing? Oh, right? The Woman's World? Yeah, yeah. Is that this song, a woman's? It's, I they can't. declared 2010's pop dead when that song came out. It was crazy. Yes, it was, it was pretty atrocious. And then it bombed so hard that she was like, guys... I was joking. Yeah, yeah. she's like, like oh. this is an LOL. Yeah. And everyone's like, no, the song no, blows. The song sucks <laughs> yeah. and it's just awful. In so a she, time with like a Sabrina Carpenters and yeah, the Yeah, sorry, girl. Rose, like, you're you're yes, we though. did a whole like whole thing about Katy Perry like really missing oh, the mark okay. this yeah, summer. Yeah, yeah. So she decides, you know, she's going to leave American Idol. I have she's to do gonna, something relevant. Yeah, she has. So she gets on Call Her Daddy and she says the like grossest thing Ooh, I didn't catch the grossest. I remember she was talking about how she was like, I want it to be the elf. I want someone to alpha me. Or oh, whatever. yeah. She calls herself an alpha. Yeah. She says that her love language is um, 
what's it called? What are the love languages? The, um, Yours is like violence. Uh, favors, what is it? Um, uh, acts like, of service. Like quality time, acts Gifts. of service. Acts yeah. of service is yeah. her love language. I'm like, what's love language? Like um, oral sex, what do you want? Hers is like acts of service. Like, you know, she wants people to, uh, she likes walking into a kitchen and the dishes are done. You know, the groceries are put away, all that kind of stuff. Who doesn't? Well, she takes it to another <laughs> step further. She's like, if I walk into like a room in my house and the laundry's done, the dishes are done, I'm gonna suck your dick. Oh wow, okay, that's and, really, that's a lot of motive to do the chores. And she, yeah, and she said this on on the podcast that she, but it was a little like more of a. Um, I think I did see this clip, and she was like. I will fucking eat your ass yeah, if you she, did, if she yes. went like vulgar. Over. Yeah, and yeah. So Katy Perry shamelessly shared that she rewards her fiance Orlando Bloom with oral sex when he does chores around the house. Which cool. That sounds like a dream, but at the same time, the way she said it was so like Terrifying. weirdly aggressive that like I was Viking. actually like I used to think Katy Perry was like one of the most beautiful, like I hot women. I and then too. there's something about her that it's icks weird. Me. And I say this as me. I'm like, if she walked in here and was like, Josh, I will suck, I it would be so aggro that I don't know that I would enjoy it. Yes. Yeah. Look at this shirt. No, she's got nipple piercings coming out of the shirt. Like it's got like the holes no! for the piercings. No. Yeah, I noticed that. Oh, that's much. so stupid. Like, where'd you get that on Melrose? Yeah, it's Ugh. weird, right? There's like the piercings show. Oh, so yeah, I mean, I honestly like I would be afraid to wash a dish because I feel like Katie's eyes would be glowing and burning in the back of my head and I would turn around slowly and she would turn into Baraka from Mortal Kombat yes. and then just grab a hold and <laughs> That's the thing I feel like him. Yeah. She is so aggro that yeah. it's like it, it's too intense for me. She's like manic all the you know what I mean? Like the way she X is just... I can't believe Orlando Bloom is... He just seems like a mm -hmm. chill dude. Yeah, so actually the quote is, so it's like... I love when the quote starts with, so it's like... <laughs> I know, if I come downstairs and the kitchen is clean and you've done it all and you've done all the dishes and you've closed all the pantry doors, you better be ready to get your dick sucked. Yeah, that was what... That was terrifying. Golly, Good all God. right, lady, chill when out. When did K Katy Perry turn into the sexual Babadook? <laughs> Good <laughs> God, I'm gonna fucking suck your dick right away. Orlando, <laughs> did you make the bed? <laughs> yes, Katie, I did. <laughs> like terrifying. Good. Yeah. God, it is intense. I was very like, uh, icked out by it. That's she says, sure. "I don't need a red Ferrari. I can buy a red Ferrari. Just do the fucking dishes." Yeah, that's scary. I, I like that. suck your dick. <laughs> it's that easy. <laughs> Could you imagine? No. If your wife, she's one intense, day, dude. Ooh, gives me the creeps. Whew, terrifying. Which is why I mean, it, it makes sense now that she has a song called "Roar." Yeah, you know, <laughs> you're gonna hear me roar. <laughs> yeah, do the dishes and she'll roar. No shit, do the dishes and, and and you're gonna roar because she's gonna be gnawing off your dong. Yeah, it's like one of those blowjobs that's not even like awesome. It's like so mechanical, but they think they're doing everything. Do you know what I'm saying? Where it's mm. like, go, 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 and you're just like, all right, how about you just like... Like it's a, a corn bit. on the cob? Yeah. Like, like it's like, like Glenn Close's The Deliverance or Teeth? Or like they're mining for oil. Like they're just like... Jenna Bush, full yeah, circle. Jenna Bush full style. They're doing, giving you the old Jenna Bush. Full circle. <laughs> full circle. No, but I, it's like... I, I, don't know, I, want, I don't want to know about a Jenna Bush, Beach. I kind of do. Ew! <laughs> <laughs> no! Um, okay, well, going from run, one rocker to another one, this one just broke before we got here I today. I can't believe this. So Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters has just announced that he fathered a child outside of his marriage. Um, it's kind of crazy. It went all over just literally now. Um he says in a statement shared on Instagram that the Foo Fighters frontman said, I've recently become the father of a new baby daughter born outside of my marriage. I plan to be a loving and supportive parent to her. He continued, I love my wife and my children. I am doing everything I can to regain their trust and earn their forgiveness. We're grateful for your consideration toward all the children involved as we move forward together. Grohl declined to share any further details about the new baby or the mother of the child. So he has three daughters already, uh, with his wife, Jordan Bloom, who he's been married to since 2003. He has daughters that were born in 2006, 2009, and 2014. 
Um, before marrying Bloom, he was married to Jennifer Lee Youngblood from 94 to 97. He has acknowledged that his infidelity led to the end of their relationship. Grohl and the Foo Fighters have spent much of the summer touring in support of their most recent album, but here we are, released last year. But they have one upcoming date scheduled, a set at the Soundside Music Festival in Bridgeport, Connecticut on September 29th. This is insane. Well, while I, I am like surprised by it and shocked, I'm actually more shocked at the part that is me being shocked because this is just rock and roll. Like this, this is a story that like, if this was about Mick Jagger or like Led Zeppelin or like someone in the seventies, we would have just heard about it on a behind the music at some point. Like, <laughs> it's not like what a great show that was. Yeah. It would be like, go, go, go. Uh, Dave had an infidelity issue and it would be like, yeah, every, they all fucking had yeah. that. You know what I mean? Like but Motley like, Crue, all these bands. Like, but Dave, I, I don't see, I don't know. Cause I feel like they did this like with, what's his name from Maroon 5. Like he did, he did Adam this. Levine. Yeah. Adam Levine did this. I feel like, yeah, and they tried, but he was like a pop stars kind of like, he wasn't a rock star. You think Dave Grohl is? I, I, I'm agreeing with you. He's like you. the I do. last rock. I band was gonna left. say the yeah. last like rock star. Because they used to be like, they used to do like borderline criminal shit. Some of these guys like they'd be like, and then they married their 14 year old niece or whatever, like Elvis and all these people. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> you know, like fucking Jerry Lee Lewis. Jerry Lee and all Lewis. These people, but like people are like, but they're wild and crazy. They do drugs. Yeah. And then like in the 80s, it was like all the excess with like the Tommy Lees and the like. That crazy movie where they're like, you know, they in that book they just talk about the all, the orgies they basically have. And yeah, it, like it, in the grotto of the Playboy Mansion. Now, like grunge was supposed to be like, we don't do all that shit. They yeah. were still getting their dicks sucked, but they weren't like flaunting it. Do you know what Easy I mean? Easy, Katy Perry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did someone clean a dish? <laughs> Katy, no, back, back. So, I mean, it's not shocking that a guy in a rock band is, like, cheating on his wife. I mean, it, it's... <laughs> uh, I know, it's really it's really just sad. But Dave Grohl was always, like, the good guy. That's what I was... Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Like, Dave, he, he's funny. They, they, they're, they you know, they always have fun together as a band. They just lost their drummer, R.I.P. Right, but maybe that could have been a traumatic thing that made yeah. him do some and some like, choices. Some succubus from another country was like, I would make everything better, Well, because I don't think that he even, like, I, I don't think he's, like, sober, so he might still, like, get drunk or whatever, and the death of his friend might have, like, made him get extra drunk, and he's doing things now that he shouldn't be doing, which it's like, I don't take anything away from him being a genuine person for that yeah. part of it. He just screwed up. But it's like, we're all disappointed. It's disappointing. So yeah, I think that's that really Dave, the, the the scarring thing about it. Usually, like I said, if this was if this was Tommy Lee, no shade on Tommy Lee, you know. If this was him, though, you'd be like, well, yeah, he's Tommy Lee. Dude. Yeah, I mean, like, we get it. Yeah, yeah. But I think Dave needs to just make his way back home and apologize. <laughs> <laughs> that's really all it is. Yep. Yep. His wife will take him back. It's fine. No, of course. I mean, this is a a tum piece of tumult in the relationship. He's got a more money than God so that child can just be taken care of and it won't make any dents in the lifestyle that already is being lived. Yeah. But they're going to call the band now the Goo Goo Fighters <laughs> um, for the alleged Goo Goo child that was born. <laughs> and finally, last story of the finally day. The Goo Goo Dolls. The Goo Goo Dolls and Foo Fighters. Goo Goo Foo Fighters. Like, That's uh, weird. Like, Johnny Resnick and joins forces with them. Guys... Brace yourselves. Oh my, oh the, my. the announcement we have been waiting for on the Just Saying podcast. Firefest 2 is happening. <laughs> so Fire Festival is happening April 25th, 2025. Save the date. It says we are seven and a half months away. Uh, this is coming from Billy McFarlane, who is the uh host of the tragically I mean, shit fest of Firefest. If you don't know what I'm talking about, this was the festival that they promised, you know, Kendall Jenner was going to show up and like hang out in a tiki hut with you. And it turned into like overflowed porta potties, hot conditions, and slabs of cheese. Um, so he came out with this. This interview came out today. And he let us know. I think he was actually in prison for a while too for fraud. Oh, yeah. And came back and said, guys, hang on. We're coming back. So here's this actual announcement. Happening April 25th uh, of 2025, so we're seven and a half months away, we have a private island off the coast of Mexico in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Have the conversations at least begun with any musical acts? We haven't booked any talent for Fire 2. It's not going to be just music. Okay, we're seven months away. Is there any talent booked yet? No. <laughs> he just what shouldn't could book go wrong? any. 
Huh? He just shouldn't book. If if he's smart, he should lean. The Fire Festival has become our generation's like version of that's my Vietnam. Do you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> that was my fire festival. Some you're like, if you're, folks wave like, the flag. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I was in the airport today for 12 hours because my flight just kept getting canceled. It was my own personal <laughs> fire festival. Do you I know was what I'm at saying? Fire Fest. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. You thank you for your service. It's I like waited a- <laughs> in line <laughs> for air conditioning for three weeks. But you know how people say, like, oh, that was my Vietnam yeah. or whatever? That's like that's what people say now. Like, that's my fire festival. Uh, that's my fire So fest. they should lean into that and make it super shitty. They should like not have anyone booked and say that everyone's booked and like well, I mean, you're last, going to pay a premium for the experience of the first fire festival. Well, last time they said, last time they said, uh, who was it? It was um, uh, Blink One Eighty Two. Was it? I thought so. Yeah. It Which is like really? Blink One Eighty Two was supposed to be there, and um, who's a uh, Jaw Rule? Jaw Rule, ja Rule was, was, was like a partner. He was yeah, Jaw Rule was the partner. I don't know if Jaw Rule is the partner. I don't know if he says it later, but he says it's not. So far, we have it's not. Poor just job. going to be a musical festival. What's it going to be, Billy? For example, a karate combat where it talks to them to set up a pit to have like live fights at Fire Festival too. We're going to have live fights. <laughs> is this Skank Fest? I mean, what is I this? don't <laughs> know what's happening. So <laughs> we're going to have music, but it's not going to be about music. We're going to have live fights happening. Hilarious. Which will also be included with the line to the porta potties. <laughs> Live fighting. <laughs> there was plenty of probably live fights last time around. So he's like, this I'm is sure. great. This is great. We'll just build a pit. Yeah. we're. <laughs> yeah, can I get a hamburger patty and my sandwich? That'd be great. Yeah. Um, so he also says the Ted tickets. Nolan says he's already sold 100 tickets at $500 a piece. And packages will go on sale ranging from $1,400 to $1.1 million. What do you get for $1.1 million? Yeah. So you will be on a boat. You'll be scuba diving with me. You'll be bouncing around to... Oh, We'll be scuba diving with you. Oh my lord! Sign me up. I for one point one million dollars. <laughs> I get to scuba dive with this fucking turd. I don't want to scuba dive at all. If I'm paying one point one million dollars, I'd rather shit out of my own butt and see it floating next to me while <laughs> I'm scuba diving than than scuba diving with this douche. Unbelievable! This guy has no sense of how to make an event at all. This man What did he get rich doing? Being a psychopath. That's what I'm saying. Like, he has no gauge of, like... He just wants to be, like, this event man so bad. And he so has bad. no... It's like watching an open micer, like, uh, book, like, a really good show, right? And they want all the best comics around them to be like, I'm doing it. And then they eat it. And, and then they and then they're like, stage and, and they go, you, I did great. I crushed it. Isn't this so great? And it's like, because they just heard laughs from everyone else. From the hallway, and from like, all of us laughing at this show. person. I was on the list. So he says, for 1.1, you'll be you'll be on a boat with me and... Other islands and other countries and small planes. You believe someone will pay $1.1 million for a fire Festival 2 experience? So we put applications for the million-dollar ticket uh, up a few months ago. We had over 100 people apply. Fire Festival 2 is happening. This is complete BS. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure trolls are applying for these things. I think they are probably trolls. Like accounts. some guy with a YouTube channel that makes like a couple grand a month is probably like, "All right, guys, we're gonna we're gonna put down five hundred dollars here for uh, Billy McFarland's yeah. Fire Festival too. Let's just see how this goes. Let's just see how he, how he know, maybe eats. we'll maybe we'll do a broadcast from Fire Festival too and shit all over. What do you say, folks? Wait, get in the chat, like and subscribe. And also, <laughs> I also do think that he was in jail and missed. Troll accounts becoming a thing. I this is a guy that doesn't understand. He's like, why would anyone troll me? I'm so cool. It's one of those. <sighs> so I mean, he thinks that stupid. everyone thinks he's cool from I that know. documentary, like a bad boy. He's like, yeah, I fucked all those people out a lot of money, and it was almost an international incident. But uh, hey, we're gonna do, do it, it again. again. <laughs> let's run it back. Let's do it again. <laughs> hey, if Titanic two can happen, it so did, can Fire it? Fest two. <laughs> Uh, doing, he's doing it in Mexico this time. What could go wrong? Where was it last he's time? He's got the cartels and stuff. He oh, did it on God. like a Caribbean island. Oh my God, the cartels are going to ravage that place. They're going to have a blast with him. They can't wait. Yeah, Firefest will be literally <laughs> Montezuma's revenge out of his asshole. Remember how shit, it's like the radio commercial for, remember how shitty Firefest 1 was? Well, this time, you might die. <laughs> <laughs> Tara Reed stars in Firefest 2. <laughs> we'll still have bad restrooms, no food, but this time, the cartel might slit your throat. And-
your wife. <laughs> now in IMAX 3D. Josh Potter, thank you so much for being here. Did oh, you have fun? Thank you. I love it. Every time. Thanks uh, for you having can come me. back whenever you want. It's always Can't so much fun. Can't wait to go in a Jenna Bush wormhole. Oh my God. I know what you're going to do this <laughs> afternoon. Just the Jenna Bush experience. <laughs> JBE. Uh, welcome to the fam. Uh, make sure to tune in to Josh Potter, the Josh Potter show here on the Comedy Store Network. Yeah. And please tell everybody where they can find you all the dates you got coming up, all that jazz. Uh, the Josh Potter show. Show, uh, is on my YouTube channel, but it's okay. filmed out of here. And so go like and subscribe on there if you can. And uh, I'm going to be at Skankfest, Speak of the Devil. And that sounds, it sounds kind of like Firefest like Fire too, uh, too. It's actually a lot of fun and wonderful. So come on to that in Vegas if, you, uh, if you're around. And uh, that's at the end of the month. And other than that, I'm uh, lining up some dates. So I'm going to announce them soon. I Perfect. And you can also Venmo him for $1.1 million to hang out with him at Skankfest in Vegas. Yeah, we can scuba dive at Skankfest. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> that's just doing coke in the bathroom. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, you guys, we've got a, uh, I'll be in Hawaii next week, but we've got Heather McMahon coming up. And uh, also you can check out my dates coming up in the fall. I'll have those out soon, hopefully. And as always, we will see you next time here on the Just Saying Podcast. You guys have a fantastic week. Bye. Bye.